We all know that configuration is really boring and it's always a pain to set up within an application. But what we're going to be doing is using the package that we downloaded earlier, uh, this config package here. And we're going to be using this to give us the ability to specify settings or configuration for different environments that we want to switch between. So for example, when you build your application, you're going to be working on your local machine with your local database uh, with maybe a test email account. But when you go live, you want to switch these over really quickly. So we're going to be taking advantage of Slim's uh, configuration mode, and we're going to be doing that by pulling in different configuration options. So let's get started. All we're going to do is inside of our app directory, we're going to create a config folder. This is going to store our configuration. So we're going to create in here two files. One is going to be development.php and the other is going to be production.php. So development is the configuration we're going to specify for our local machine and production is the configuration we're going to specify for our web server when we upload it. And this means you don't have to keep changing over your configuration files. But how do we switch between these two modes of configuration? Well, inside of our app, outside of here, we're going to define a file called mode.php. And in here, we're either going to write development or we're going to write production or any other uh, configuration you want. You could call it dev and prod if you wanted to, but I'm going to call it development and we're going to be focusing on only our development configuration. We will be creating production as well. So let's write out our configuration. This is going to be really boring, but trust me, this will make it a lot easier to integrate into your application. And it'll also be a lot easier when you need to switch over settings because everything will be defined in this file. You won't have to go into any other file to update your configuration. So from this file, then we're going to return an array. That's all we're doing. Um, we're just returning an array and we're going to define all of our configuration options inside of this array. So the first then is just app specific configuration. So things like the URL to our application and also things like hashing as well. You could break these up into smaller parts if you want. It really doesn't matter. So for the URL to our application, this is just going to be the base URL. It's not going to be the whole URL here. So um, for me, it's just localhost. So let's go HTTP localhost. Now, this is important because when we uh, switch to a live server, we might be working with a domain, so we can switch that domain over in our production configuration. So we're now going to decide what hashing configuration options we want. And this is for password hashing specifically. This isn't for like SHA-256 when we come to that. This is just hashing configuration. So we're going to choose an algorithm, and that's going to be password B crypt. Again, this can be changed really easily. If you go ahead and look up the password hashing API, uh, PHP's password hashing API, uh, you can find out more about this. And we also have a cost for generating that password as well. I'm going to set mine to 10, uh, but you can increase or decrease this depending on the server power. So that's that done. What we now want to do is define our database settings. So our database settings really relate to how we're pulling in Laravel's database component. But Laravel's database component uses PDO, so we have things like a driver, so we can choose a MySQL database or uh, any other database type that's supported. So driver is MySQL. We then have the host, which for me locally is 127.0.0.1 or localhost. We have a database name. We've not set up our database yet, but I'm going to call it site so we can uh, you can change this if you want to, it really doesn't matter. Now we have our username and password. For me, this is just root and root, but obviously when you switch over to production, this is going to be different. So that's how it's uh, nice to be able to switch over. We also define the character encoding, which is going to be UTF-8. And we define the collation as well, which is UTF-8 Unicode CI. And we can also prefix as well, but we're going to leave this empty. So that's our database settings out the way and done with. 
So next is our authentication settings. So this is really just uh, session names uh, for different things. So we're going to say auth. So our session name is going to be user ID. That's the, the, the key that we're going to use when we set our session when the user logs in. And we also need one for the remember cookie as well, because remember we're building remember me functionality. I'm just going to call this user underscore R for user remember. But of course, you can uh, change this. It's entirely up to you. So now come our email settings, which we'll be filling in a little bit later. And in fact, we'll fill them in now. So we have SMTP auth true. So remember, we're using SMTP to send email. If you can't use SMTP to send email, you might just want to sign up for a Google account just so you can do this for now. And we'll have all the Google Mail SMTP settings here right now. So SMTP secure is TLS. That's how we authenticate with Google's SMTP server. We have the host, which is just smtp.gmail.com. And we have the username, which is your email address. Again, if you haven't signed up for a Google account or if you don't have one, you might want to now. So my Google mail address is tabby at cocourse.com. This is just uh, an email address with no emails in. We need the passwords. So you want to store your mail password here as well. In my case, it's I love cats with a, a four instead of the A. We also need to define the port as well that we're working with. That's 487 for Google. And we're also going to define whether we want to be sending HTML emails, which we do. Uh, you don't have to, but we'll turn that on. OK, so now that we've got our mail settings in, let's look at our view settings or twig settings specifically. I'm going to turn twig debugging on. So I'm going to create a new array here with debug to true. So we can easily turn that on and off based on development or production. So now we want to look at cross-site request forgery settings. And all this is, is just the session that we're basically storing this in, which is CR, CSRF token or underscore token. So um, these settings or configuration aren't exhaustive. They're not going to provide you with configuration for absolutely everything, but you can change these settings here if you want to remove a certain setting or if you want to add a certain setting. But let's leave them on just for now so we can focus on building the app and then we will uh, or you can go and just remove them or add more later on. So for our production settings, then I'm just going to copy and paste this over here. But what you're going to want to do is change your production settings based on the settings when you upload to your website and uh, everything will be good to go. So We've defined our config within app config, which we can easily change as we go between servers. But how do we actually include this configuration uh, into Slim? Well, what we can do within Slim is we can define a mode. So inside of Slim, as we instantiate it, we can pass an array with configuration options specifically to Slim. And here we can say mode and we can choose the mode that we're currently in. So you could say mode development or you could say mode production. Now, we obviously don't want to hard code that value in. We want to get this from our mode.php file. And what that means is we can then switch our configuration based on which one we have. So all we're going to do is say file get contents. And we're going to uh, go from our ink root and pull in the contents of mode.php. So all that means then is that when we do something like echo app config mode, we see development. And when we change this to production, we see production. So you might be thinking, well, how is that useful? We've got the mode in slim, but we're still not pulling in our configuration. Well, for our configuration, remember, we are using the config package that we downloaded earlier. And we can set configuration mode within Slim and then attach this configuration. So let's do this now. So we'll say app configure mode. And then we choose the mode that we want to configure for. Now, because this is dynamic, we just pass in app mode or app config mode like that. 
and we then have a callback here and we want to use our app because we need to um, set our configuration within our app so we this just basically puts app in scope of this uh, of this callback or this closure so what we want to do now is load our configuration using our configuration package which will easily be able to read these two files and we're going to place it within our app configuration so we're going to say app config equals and let's put a little test here for now uh, let's just say test true and then down here let's do a var dump on app config so now what it's going to do is just to recap we set our mode, so let's say we have mode of development, so we'll go with that. So mode is now development. So configure mode for development, pull in a specific config for development. At the moment we just have an array in here. But let's look at what happens when we var dump config, and we see an array test true. But now what we want to do is we want to actually pull in real configuration, and that's using our configuration package. So this is namespaced under noodle house config. So we're going to say use noodle house config. Although the package name is Hassan, Ka Hassan Khan, um, it's still namespaced under noodle house because this was the previous uh, name for it. So that's why it's like that, if you're wondering. And we now have access to this config uh, class. So what we do here is we say config load and then we pull in from our include root we go into app into config and then this is either going to be development.php or production.php or any other mode that you have so all we have to do here then is just say app config and then in here we say app mode.php so Again, just to uh, recap, we have development set as our mode. This grabs our mode, loads in the config for the mode, which is either development or production.php or whatever else. So now when we refresh our case, we've got a um, not found file exception. So let's just see, ah, that's why we need that forward slash just there. So let's refresh now. And there we go. So we've got all of our configuration in here. You can just about see things like driver, the host, the username, password, etc. So we now have configuration pulled into our application. But how do we get configuration options? Well, all we do here is we echo app config get and then we access these by um, uh, separating each of these levels by a, a dot. So for example, if we wanted to get the DB driver, when we eventually configure our database, we see DB dot driver. And that's smart enough to loop through this and, and find DB driver, which is MySQL. So we see MySQL. Try and ignore this for 404, by the way, because we don't have a root set up. So this is how we get configuration. So let's say that we have development as MySQL and we have production, for example, as SQLite. Uh, this wouldn't happen, but let's take a look now if we switch from development to production. So this says MySQL. When we switch this to production, we now see a new configuration option. So that's how we switch between different configurations. So let's change this back to MySQL. Let's close these off and let's get rid of this example. So we now have configuration set up with our application. We know how to switch modes from development to production and we also know how to pull in our configuration. So that means we're ready to go and use this configuration as we build the rest of our project. So the next part, we're going to look at actually setting up the user's database table so we can start to actually then go on and add database support, create our user model, and then start logging the user in and doing everything else that we need to do.